There was a study Gabor Ordosi sent me. He sent me myriad studies, and they're all fantastic, especially twin studies, which prove all of what we're saying. I love the twin studies, you know, genetic twins, and you get to get real answers. But there was one that radio labeled fats in a meal, and they fed a bunch of volunteers three meals during the day, and they radio tracked the actual fat molecules from the meals to see where they went. The outcomes were stunning. There were so many stunning outcomes from this that I'll just touch on one, though, that I found amusing. Like you say, it's ironic. The people who are healthy, the fats were rapidly taken up into fat cells, which is the storage to be released later when you're fasting, uh, and appropriate places. The people who are insulin resistant, they were not really taken up so well into the proper depots or depots, as the Americans say. They tended to end up going to the liver, where the liver packaged VLDLs out of them, hence shooting up your ApoB LDL particle number, right? So the insulin resistance there was shown beautifully as the mechanism, one of the mechanisms, as to why the higher particle number correlates with heart disease. But it's to do with insulin resistance. It's nothing to do with it. The particle well of course it is i mean the other irony is that, that, that they find that within after well what they find that, that the fatty acids that they do find are, are generally palmitic acid anyway um and and they say well therefore palmitic acids is is is, is actually really bad stuff to eat you know no no it's because the liver makes palmitic acid yeah. out of carbohydrates you idiots okay. and you don't understand anything you're looking at you know, like, I think it's about 95% palmitic acid is, is the fatty acid of choice made by the liver. Saturated fatty acid, of course, because the liver yeah, will make unhealthy yeah. things for you to 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 distribute around your body. The cholesterol hypothesis and everything around it, the saturated fat hypothesis and the diet heart hypothesis, is like the upside down world. In that world, everything makes sort of sense. But when you actually look at it compared to the real world, none of it works. You, you yeah. It's almost like you've created... I, I sometimes use the example of the geocentric model of the universe, which is the Earth is at the center, the sun goes around the Earth, the moon goes around the Earth, the planets go around the Earth, the stars go around the Earth, everything goes around the Earth. Well, you can sort of make that model work just about. You can make the observations fit, the, 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 but you do have a problem with planets because planets do this thing called retrograde motion where they go in a loop and then go off. Because if you're looking up and you're going at that speed and the planet's going at that speed, it will appear to go backwards in the sky at times. So, so actually, they did create models where these wandering stars went around in little loops. And if you accepted that a wandering star could go around in a loop, the rest of your model worked. But you always had these wandering stars. It's like, hold on, what are those? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. But yeah. and you can do with it. You can do with cholesterol if you say it's LDL and it's ApoA lipoprotein molecules. Well. You can make that work into a hypothesis if you ignore what is actually going on. If you, if, because what you're doing is you're just finding a further accurate, more accurate association with heart disease, not a causal thing. And then you're making everything fit. 